So, hi, I'm Garrett again, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about reservoir starting stage duration analysis, which is one of the analyses you need to run RMC RFA. And I'm also going to talk about the empirical frequency curve, which is the plotting positions of the data that you're using. So, sorry. So, during this presentation, you're going to learn how to perform a reservoir starting stage duration analysis um, and the empirical frequency curve analysis. And you'll be introduced to how these analyses are actually used to inform the hydrologic loading curve or hazard curve for the NAM. So, this lecture covers the last two analyses in RMC RFA the reservoir starting stage duration analysis and the empirical frequency curve. So most of us are familiar with flow or stage duration exceedance curves. An example up is shown right up here. Um, this just represents the percent of time the reservoir stage is above a given stage. Uh, so duration curves are typically calculated for seasonal, monthly, or annual time periods. Uh, here, we're trying to find the monthly reservoir starting stage duration, and that's actually what RMC RFA uses, which is used to sample the initial stage for reservoir routing uh, based on the sampled month in which the flood event occurs. So RFA randomly samples a month, and then when it knows what month it sampled, it samples from this starting stage duration curve for that month. So starting stage duration curves represent the percent of time during which the antecedent reservoir stages are exceeded. Uh, this plot is the result of an analysis that you'll all get to do here later this afternoon, where the observed daily stage data has been filtered out before calculating the stage duration curves. Uh, the user input daily stage gate is shown in blue, and the filtered stage gate is shown in red. Uh, the reason we do this is because for this type of analysis, we're trying to get to the antecedent reservoir stages before an event occurs. So we actually want to filter out the flood events because we're looking for what happens before the flood arrives. Uh, that's what these duration curves are used for. So that's why we're kind of cutting out the floods here. You know, I know for when you're doing like a PMF analysis, you usually do some kind of an antecedent condition where you take half the PMF, run it through, and then five days later you're on the actual PMF. That's really rare hydrologic circumstances. In most cases, assuming the events are independent is more correct. So that's the assumption that RMC RFA uses. So within RFA, to add a new starting stage duration analysis, you can right click on the analysis tab or select the analyses from the drop down menu. And you'll enter a name description, just like anything else in RFA. Um, and then you'll enter the analysis parameters. The analysis parameters are shown here on the right. So there are three parameters to a starting stage duration analysis. Um, the first, is a stage gauge. So you have to select the stage gauge that Carolyn talked about in the previous lecture. So you can use that as your input here. <clears throat> Oops. Then the next is the pool change threshold. So the pool change threshold represents the maximum rate of rise in the pool per day. Pool changes that exceed this threshold are identified as flood events, and the stage data is excluded from the analysis to develop the antecedent reservoir stage duration curves. Uh, to estimate this threshold, what you typically want to do is look at a few years where you didn't have a flood, or maybe your reservoir was operating under relatively normal conditions, and look how quickly that pool changes per day. And that'll give you an idea of what your pool change threshold should be, and then on the flip side of that, look at a couple of flood events and then look at how rapidly your pool rises. And that'll kind of help you hone in on this number. So, yeah, this is just an example of what that looks like. So a one day change of greater than two feet, you can see that the filter data is the red line there on the left. So it's actually excluding that peak stage versus a one day change of less than two feet. Um, that's the threshold selected. On the right there, that could be potentially filling up to your normal conservation pool for your authorized operating purposes. So the last input is the typical high pool duration. So to determine a reasonable input for the typical high pool duration, you have to ask yourself, what's the duration of a typical flood in my watershed? So again, you have to look at your stage data uh, for multiple individual flood events and estimate how many days the pool remains elevated there. So the hydrograph shown here 
is the June 2013 event, which had a high stage duration of approximately 28 days. Always be sure to look at several events uh, to come up with a good overall estimate because this isn't perfect. You know, every flood is going to have slightly different variations in what it looks like and how long it stays up. But what this parameter does then is based on your pool change threshold, it'll screen out the following duration that you set it for so that you're not incorporating that into your antecedent reservoir stage duration curves. That's just the 28 days. So now that we've estimated our parameters, uh, we can enter the pool change threshold and the typical high pool duration. And then click compute. And after you click compute, the stage gate plots populated and the stage date table, stage data will gauge table will also be populated. So in the stage data table, you can see that there is stage. There it is. And what you'd like to look at is what events got filtered out. So this is a really nice tool. You can zoom in on the periods that you're interested in and look at how much of the flood hydrographs was filtered out. And this is kind of a qualitative way to assess whether or not the pool change threshold that you selected and the high pool duration, if they're correct or not. So it's a little bit of an iterative process. So it involves some quantitative analysis by looking at some past flood events and some past just normal operations years. Then entering the parameters into the RFA analysis and then just kind of going through the plots to make sure that everything looks reasonable. So in this example, the filtering starts out on May 31st um, because the pool change from May 30th to May 31st was greater than two feet. The stage data continues to be filtered out for the following 28 day period. Starting on May 31st and ending on uh, June 27th. So then on the second tab is actually the monthly duration curves from the analysis that you just completed. So dams with large seasonal duration or fluctuations in pool can often have greater variation in the duration curves. Uh, RFA took the starting stage gauge data for the reservoir and computed the percent of time that each stage was exceeded per month. Now duration curves are typically developed using observed daily average stage data. Now stages are shown on the vertical axis and the percent of time exceeded is shown on the horizontal axis. So you can see like for October, approximately 50% of the time that elevation is around 572.5 feet. So you can toggle on and off the different months in order to inspect the individual curves more closely. Um, those are just the check marks down at the bottom for each month. You can just do that interactively with the software. So in here, uh, I have May and December turned on, but I turned off the other 10 months. And I can see that December has a lower pool than May for the most of the time until you get about to the 2% exceedance and December has higher pool. So the tabular results are the calculated values for the duration curves. So if you desire, you can manually enter the duration curves by right clicking and selecting allow manual data entry. This generally isn't needed, uh, but it is an option in the software to give the user flexibility for their particular analysis. So recall that for RMC RFA simulations, uh, first the month when the flood occurs from the seasonality analysis that Carolyn just talked about is sampled randomly. Uh, then RFA samples a starting stage from the duration curves also. And it does this a bunch of times for every event, so you get a group really good spread of data for that antecedent reservoir condition. So just for example, if RFA selects the month of May for a simulation iteration, then the corresponding reservoir starting stage duration for May is used to sample a starting stage for the reservoir running computation. And you can actually look at all the realizations and events in RFA to kind of track through how it does this. So if you run the full uh, simulation, you can look at 10,000 different realizations, and there are 10,000 events per realization. And the table will tell you, I sampled the starting stage in May, here's the antecedent reservoir elevation, here's the info volume I use. So you can actually track through how it does this. It's pretty cool. Okay. The final analysis in RMC RFA is the empirical frequency curve. Um, the objective of this portion of the lecture is just to understand how to, import, how to perform the empirical frequency curve analysis and how it's used to help inform the loading curve. So the empirical frequency curve analysis can be performed on stage or inflow data sets. Uh, the empirical frequency curve uses the annual maximums calculated from the user daily stage or flow gauge. 
So we're trying to capture the peak stages here for each year in our record that we're going to plot along with the loading curve eventually in RMC RFA. But first, this curve is created by ranking the annual maximum peak stages in this case in descending order and assigning the data a plotting position then plotting that data. So as you can see in this example, the annual maximums from the, the observed daily stage data are plotted as blue points using the Weibull plotting positions formula. So it's just the rank of the data divided by the sample size plus one. So an empirical stage frequency curve can be created and used to help calibrate an RMC RFA model to the observed annual maximum stages. So like all windows in RMC RFA, uh, you click start, give it a name and a description, and then move to enter the parameters. So that's the name and the description. And then these are the parameters. So the first two parameters are pretty self-explanatory. You have to select the stage gauge that you're working with. Uh, then after you select that gauge, uh, sorry, after you select the gauge, the type drops down. So whether or not it's a stage gauge or a flow gauge. So if you're selecting an inflow gauge, like inflow data, you put whatever duration is the critical duration. Uh, but if you're using a stage gauge, the duration should be one because we're looking at annual maximums with the stage data when we're plotting that. So unless you have a reason to use a different plotting position formula, uh, use Weibull, which is the default in the program. So two other plotting positions are available, median and hazen. These formulas compute the exceedance probability of a data point based on the rank and the sample of a given size. So the year specification can be the water year for most cases, um, which is the default, or it also allows you to do the calendar year. Uh, this, allows, this allows you to define the beginning and ending date for the analysis. Uh, make sure to choose a year specification that captures all the flood events for that time period. For example, if the flood season typically occurs in spring and summer, then a calendar year starting on January 1st specification could be sufficient for your purposes. However, if the flood season occurs in the fall and winter months, then a water year which starts on October 1st and ends on September 30th of the water year uh, might be a better to capture those events. And water years are typically what we use in, in most regions of the country for hydrology. So once you hit the compute button, the tabular results are, and plot are populated and the empirical frequency curve will be available to display with the simulation results. This can help calibrate the model and make sure that the model prediction is similar to the actual observed events. So this doesn't show it here, but you can plot this empirical frequency curve on your final loading curve. And especially within the range of the observed data, what we mean by calibration is you can do things like uh, alter the elevation storage discharge curve or the elevation discharge curve to kind of better match up because it's using a simplified monotonically increasing relationship to get a better fit between your observed data so that your model is actually replicating what you see in the empirical frequency curve better. So the empirical frequency curve analysis in RMC RFA uh, has some limitations. Plotting positions can only be calculated for a continuous record. If you have historic stage or flow information, Hirsch-Steddinger plotting positions can be calculated for stage or flow using the RMC best fit software. So a plot showing these plotting positions on the stage or flow frequency curves will then need to be manually created outside of RMC RFA. So you do your RFA analysis, export it to Excel, and then if you're using her study for plotting positions, you would also compute that outside of RFA so that you could plot a historical event if you had a historical stage that fell outside of your systematic record.